Hey everyone, lately we've been doing videos on how to play tough lane matchups through proper wave control, positioning, and trading habits. These are some of the most important parts of laning, and we want to make sure you guys really start to learn them, so we're going to do another video on how to execute these strategies against a scary kill lane. Here, we've got Doublelift playing Lucian Velkaz into a Draven Leona, probably one of the scariest lane matchups you'll run into. Let's break down the matchup real quick. So, Draven is pretty much always stronger than Lucian, and wins any even auto for auto trades. And if Leona connects on either Lucian or Velkaz with Draven nearby, it's pretty much a free kill. However, Lucian and Velkaz have a strong poke and range advantage over Draven. This means their best chance is to accumulate poke damage early and often, while keeping the wave as close to their tower as possible to farm safely and avoid giving Leona easy all-ins. To execute this, here's our game plan. Mission 1, Wave Control. Like we just mentioned, Lucian needs to keep the wave near his tower and away from Draven's to make it harder for Leona to land engages and for the enemy jungler to gank. To do this, he'll auto the wave at either the same rate as Draven or a little bit slower. He doesn't want to let the Draven build up big waves, but his priority is to farm without taking damage, which sometimes means missing last hits to let the wave push in. If the wave does cross the middle of the lane onto Draven's side, Lucian should look to back off and last hit super cautiously in an effort to get it pushing back to him. On the other hand, if the enemy is also last hitting to try to get the wave pushing towards them, Lucian should last hit to slow push and build a large wave, then switch to hard pushing once the wave crosses the center of the lane and becomes dangerous to farm. And if he ever forces the Draven back, but the wave is slow pushing to Draven, it's crucial Lucian shoves it into Draven's tower before resetting to avoid giving the enemy a freeze. This is a lot to take in, but we'll be going over it constantly during the video, so bear with us. Mission 2, Positioning. We've been stressing the importance of positioning behind ranged minions in weaker matchups a lot lately. In case you missed it, Doublelift needs to avoid overextending by using his ranged minions as a gauge of how far up he can position. As in, he should either be on them if he's ahead and can deny CS, or behind them if he's neutral and has to respect an all-in. This way, he won't open himself up to ganks or Leona engages, even when he has an HP advantage to pressure Draven off of last hits. To take it a step further, Doublelift also needs to make sure he's either positioned on the opposite side of Leona, or is safely in his bush, if it's clear of enemy wards, with dash ready whenever she has E ready. However, when the wave is in front of his tower, Lucian can worry a bit less about positioning away from Leona, since he can drag her into his tower with a backwards dash if she lands E on him. Mission 3, Chain Poke Damage. This isn't as common of a concept in our videos, but the idea is we're looking for as much free damage on the Draven as possible, which shouldn't be a new idea. Basically, it's impossible to win any heads up trade with the Draven since he's overpowered. However, whenever Draven is slowed by Velka's Q, it becomes much easier to land poke on him. Lucian should always look to capitalize on Velka's landing slows by following up with a W, and sometimes an E auto if the Leon is out of position, into immediately walking away. In nearly all cases, just a W should be enough. Alright, that about covers it. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments, otherwise let's get into it. Well, this game starts off with some good old fashioned North American cheddar as the enemy foreman invades topside to slaughter poor Rumble. Doublet responds nicely with a cross map play to invade and ward red buff. Whenever you see the enemy invade, your first response should be to see if you can get a ward down in their jungle. Nidalee is starting topside, so Doublelift and Velkaz walk around to wait at double golems. By positioning here, they can poke Draven and Leona with skill shots on their way to lane if they don't leash, while still being in position to poke them at red if Elise does start bot side. Once the enemy shows on the ward, Doublelift and Velkaz move to poke. Note Doublelift's positioning here. He wants to land a W, but clearly doesn't want to take any damage, and positions on the other side of the wall. On the other hand, Velkaz walked around towards them and takes some punishment damage in return. If he positioned with double lift, he probably wouldn't have gotten hurt here. When you're looking for cheesy poke like this level 1, it's important to remember not to miss the first 3 melee minions of the minion wave. They usually die at around 153 to 155, so plan accordingly. Of course, double lift manages to make it just in time. Right off the bat, Velkaz lands a Q and double lift instantly follows up with W to chain damage, playing to mission 3. Free damage on Draven is always worth, so Doublelift should always look to land harass on Draven whenever Velkaz hits him with CC. Since he's already built up a good HP advantage, Doublelift wants to keep the first few waves in the center of the lane, playing to mission 1. The further the wave is from Draven's tower, the more safely Doublelift can pressure Draven off of last hits here. 
Also, note how Doublelift plays to mission 2 and never crosses his ranged minions. He already has a solid advantage, but he still stays disciplined and avoids overextending past his minion wave. This way, he can deny CS aggressively without opening himself up to a gank. The pressure is already starting to add up. By level 2, Javen only has 2 CS to Doublelift's 8, without Doublelift ever really committing. Yeah, sure, Velka's poke is a pretty big part of this, but there's still a lot to be learned from Doublelift's positioning here. Elise smartly comes in for an early gank, but Doublelift's positioning behind his minions and opposite from Leona keeps him from blowing anything. This is a really big deal. Driven Leona is one of the strongest punishing lanes in the game, so keeping summoner spells up is crucial to surviving early. Playing to mission 2, Doublelift's positioning reflects just that. When Leona moves to position on the other side of the lane, Doublelift plays to mission 2 and instantly shifts sides to match Draven while landing another W as he catches an axe. Notice how Doublelift weaves in and out of the brush in between last hits. Doublelift uses the bush to get a free auto off by dashing for an auto when Velkaz lands Q slow. Since Draven didn't see him coming out of bush, Draven wasn't ready to hit him back, and Doublelift takes no damage by walking away right after the auto, showing a clean example of mission 3. Once Draven takes another Velkaz Q to the face, he's too low to continue laning safely. Doublelift realizes Draven wants to back, so he walks up to ideally cancel the back with a max range W. When he realizes Draven's gonna get away, he immediately starts a hard push to bounce the wave off tower, playing to mission 1. After crashing the wave, this is a pretty good time to back, but Doublelift decides to stay to shove one more wave instead. This is pretty risky, but as long as he saves his dash, he should be fine. Once Draven returns, Leona walks up for an E, and Doublelift dashes backward to drag her nice and far away from the Draven. Volkaz shows some insane damage with Ignite and Dark Harvest as Leona drops. From here, Doublelift shoves the wave in before backing to play to mission 1 and avoid giving the enemy a freeze. So, Doublelift backed with about 1150 gold and, interestingly, bought Berserker's Boots and a Health Pot. Normally, you might expect to see something like a Vamp Scepter with Refillable Pot and a Pink Ward, so why did he go Boots 2 first? Well, having the mobility of Tier 2 Boots early on helps to dodge and outplay Leona's E, and also makes getting free damage on the Draven a bit easier. Berserker's Boots also gives a much stronger power spike than anything else Doublelift could have bought here. As long as he plays safely, and depends on Velkaz poke to net him an HP advantage, he'll be strong enough to pressure Draven off of last hits. By the way, check out this nasty last hitting under tower. If you guys would like a short segment on how to improve your CSing under tower skills, let us know in the comments. As the next wave starts, Velkaz places a pink and Doublelift defends it aggressively, landing another W on Draven as he's slowed. Since they're right outside their tower, Doublelift is fine with positioning on Leona's side of the lane here since he can just dash back into his tower range if she lands a knee on him. Once Leona misses her E, Doublelift finishes the wave and asserts bush control again. However, he stays back in this bush on the next wave since it just slightly pushed onto Draven's side of the lane, which is super dangerous. This is a great example of staying mindful of missions 1 and 2. Ideally, Doublelift wants to wait and avoid autoing until the wave starts pushing back to him, or until Leona misses E again. Doublelift's patience is rewarded, as Leona walks up for an E on Velkaz, and Doublelift starts safely punishing from the side, forcing Leona to flash away. By using his bush control to deny Leona vision, Doublelift is making it difficult for her to land good E's. On the other hand, if he was constantly positioning on his mini wave while it pushes up, it'd be a bit easier for Leona to make good decisions with engaging. After trading, Doublelift notices the wave started pushing towards him, and autos enough to thin it out a bit, but allows it to keep pushing towards him. This way, he can set up a freeze and farm safely, while also denying minions aggressively with his health and poke advantages. This is a great application of mission 1, identifying a chance to freeze and shifting gears the last hitting. If things continue like this, Draven is pretty screwed since Velkaz poke will make it super hard to farm during a freeze. Unfortunately, Elise notices this and comes in for a gank. Doublelift was positioned well away from the river and on his bush control, but Velkaz overextended past his range minions and becomes a free kill. Luckily, the wave is pushing towards him and the enemy is kinda low, so being 1v2 here is no big deal. Doublelift simply stays under tower and waits for them to finish pushing the wave in, something we brought up in the last freezing user review video, farms the wave safely, and hard shoves the next wave for a clean back timing, showing a clean example of missions 2 and 1.
7 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, Doublelift is already ahead 70 to 44 CS against a Draven Leona lane. Yeah, I know, Vel'Koz is overpowered, but Doublelift's wave control and keeping the wave away from Draven's tower is playing a big role in this lead as well. Once he returns to lane, the wave is already pushing towards him, so Doublelift safely stays back, playing to mission 2, and waits to farm while only walking up to last hit. Again, something we went over in our last video. Now, let's watch as Leona levels up. Doublelift played well by not fighting in the minion wave and thinning it out before turning. This would have been a nasty 1v2 double kill if Elise wasn't camping. When he returns to lane, Doublelift continues to respect the Draven Leona pressure by remembering mission 2 and playing behind his range line, which helps him avoid a repeat Elise gank. Now that both of their flashes and heal are all down, it's even more important Doublelift continues to position like this, nice and far behind his minions, not walking up unless he's about to miss a last hit, and using W to secure last hits that are too far to auto. Until his heal and Vel'Koz flash are up, he probably shouldn't deviate from this plan at all. It's also worth noting that Draven misplayed the wave here. The enemy has no summoners and the wave was pushing towards him. So, with Elise bot side and a Leona support, this was a perfect time to freeze the lane. If Lucian Vel'Koz overextend to continue farming during the freeze, they open themselves to getting engaged on freely by the Leona. This pressure would have given Draven a great chance to bridge the CS difference and maybe even pull ahead. Instead, Draven hard pushes it in. On the other hand, Doublelift is just fine with this and stays back, playing to mission 2 once again to pick up the free farm under his tower. Over the next 3 minion waves, this pattern continues as Doublelift thins the wave when he can, gives ground and backs up behind his wave when Leona walks up, and waits under tower to farm safely. This is a super clean example of how to respect a hard CC kill lane while your summoner spells are down. Doublelift knows his game plan is to stay safe and farm when he can, and sticks to it wave after wave since the Draven isn't pressuring him with the freeze. However, when you're playing like this and the enemy is constantly shoving waves into your tower, remember to ping that they're missing as soon as each wave crashes to your tower if they aren't there with the wave. Eventually, Vel'Koz has flash and Doublelift has heal, so Doublelift can start looking for something. Let's watch what happens. This was some great opportunistic play from both sides. Doublelift had the right idea by playing to mission 3 and chaining damage on Vel'Koz slow, but Leona responded perfectly by going straight for the flash Q. If she saw Draven's E coming and landed her ult with Ignite, Doublelift was definitely dead here. Luckily, they dropped the ball and Vel'Koz laser is strong as heck, so the trade comes out in Doublelift's favor. From here, Doublelift shoves the wave in and shows a textbook example of what to do when you get priority uses his tempo to ward and look for pink wards. Way to say discipline, Doublelift. By now, you should get the idea of what your general game plan should be against kill lanes, and the rest of this laning phase becomes a circus involving random 5v5s in bot lane, so we'll cut the video here. Alright, let's recap what Doublelift did to successfully play into this terrifying all-in lane. When the enemy invaded, Doublelift moved immediately to get a ward on red buff and waited at double golem to start landing poke from level 1. Doublelift and Vel'Koz continued to build on this HP advantage level 1, and easily avoided an early cheese gank by not overextending past their minion line. Once Draven is forced out of lane, Doublelift shoves a couple waves in for a bit of a risky back timing. But, by positioning back and dragging the Leona away from Draven with a dash backward, he picks up a kill and shoves the wave in before backing to prevent a freeze. When he returns to the lane, Doublelift cautiously plays back when the wave passes the center of the lane and is rewarded with a chance to blow Leona's flash when she connects on Vel'Koz. Doublelift then takes his chance to start building a freeze of his own, which would have put Draven severely behind. However, Vel'Koz continues to position too aggressively and is punished by a gank. Doublelift responds by simply waiting for the wave to crash and shoves the next wave for farm and to prevent a freeze, ending up nearly 30 CS ahead of the Draven. When he returns to lane, Doublelift continues to position safely, but Leona forces a nasty engage on Vel'Koz. Doublelift trades nearly 2 kills in return, but Elise is persistent and dives from behind to finish him off. With his summoner spells down, Doublelift adjusts his play appropriately and shifts to strictly playing safely behind his minion waves, using W for last hits and allowing each wave to push in before farming. 
He keeps this up until his summoner spells are back up, and immediately capitalizes on a trade once they are. Alright, that about covers this video. Hopefully you all learned something about how to keep the wave on your side of the lane, how to position safely while both denying last hits and when trying to farm passively, and the importance of stacking free damage on a Draven whenever possible. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you all next time.